All right, so we have word problems here that we want to write uh, an equation or inequality for, and then we want to solve it. Uh, we actually, it says up here to summarize the solution in a sentence, but to save time on this video, I'm not going to do that. So the first thing we always want to do is read the problem and identify what it's asking us to find, and then assigning a variable to that information. So this problem, uh, pause your video just to read it and get a feel for it. What it's asking us to find is what does she need to make on the third test to have an average of 70? So we're going to let x equal the grade on the third test. And we know that she wants to make a 70 average and that her first two test grades are 72 and 74. So remember what the word average means. You have three grades. You find the average by adding them and dividing by three. So our three grades are 72, 74, and the unknown one. So we add them up, we divide by three, and we want that to equal 70. So now we start working backwards to solve for x. I'm going to undo divide by three by multiply. So on the right, I have 210. On the left, I'm going to go ahead and add these. That's going to give me 146 plus x. And then now I just subtract 146 from both sides, and I get that x is equal to 64. OK? Number two changes it a little bit. So now Jennifer's teacher says the third test will count twice. Using the exam scores from problem one, what does she need to make to get a 70 now? So the 72 and the 74 are the same, but now that third test counts two times. You can write it as x plus x, or you can write it as 2x if you wanted to. So now I have four grades to divide by that I want to equal 70. So I start by multiplying four this time. I still have 146 for the 72 and 74, two x's is two x, and then I have 280 on the right. So now I subtract the 146 from both sides. Um, I get two x equals 134, and now I divide by two, and now she needs at least a 67 in order to have a 70 average. So for number three, we have a rectangular room. The length is one inch more than three times the width. Find the dimensions if the perimeter is 26. So it's asking me to find the dimensions. That means I'm looking for length and width. So I'm going to assign some variables to these. And then here's something that the problem is telling me that the length is, anytime you see is, it's a good clue that you're going to need an equal sign. So I'm going to say the length, which is L, is, which means equals, one more than, which means I'm going to have to add one to something, three times the width. So I said that the width was W over here, right? So I'm going to say that that is three times W. So I'll write that as 3w plus 1, the length equals that. Find the dimensions, and I know that the perimeter is 26. So perimeter means when you add up all the sides. So my length is 3w plus 1. Opposite sides are equal, and my width is just w. So I'm going to add all four of these things up. So if I was writing an equation for that, I could have, so I have two w's and two of the three w plus ones. So adding all of those up equals the perimeter of 26. You also could have done w plus w plus three w plus one plus three w plus one equals 26. That would have been good too. So here I'm going to distribute this to, and now I have 2w plus 6w plus 2 equals 26. 
combining like terms gives me 8w plus 2 equals 26. Subtracting 2 from both sides gives me 8w equals 24. And then dividing by 8 gives me w equals 3. Now that's not the full answer because it asked me for the dimensions, which is length and width. So I found the w, which is width. So width is 3 inches. But remember, we said the length equals 3 times the w plus 1. So length is 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 10. So length is 10 inches. And then for this next one, we have a rectangular garden now. It has a width that is 8 feet, so w equals 8. And a length that is x plus 5, so l equals x plus 5. Find the dimensions. That means I'm finding length and width. That's what I'm looking for. If the area is 96. So now we need to remember that area is equal to length times width. So if the area is 96 and my length is x plus 5 times width, which is 8. But I need all of the x plus 5 times the 8. So I'm going to put parentheses around that. So now I have a distributive property here. 96 equals 8x plus 40. I subtract 40 from both sides. 56 equals 8x divided by 8. x equals 7. Now we're looking for length and width. And all we found was the x value. So, well, I already know the width is 8. But the length, now I have to plug that 7 in for the x. So the length is 12. So the width is 8 feet. And the length is 12 feet. On this side, we are practicing with inequalities. Your goal is to take at least 10,000 steps. You've already walked 4,387. What is the least amount you need to reach your goal? So how many steps do we have left? I'm going to call that x. So 4,387, I've already walked plus however many I need left needs to be greater than or equal to 10,000. So we just subtract that to both sides, and we get 5,613 steps, at least, right? We have to walk at least that many more. Number six, boxes of cookies cost $3.99. You can spend at most $25. How many boxes of cookies can you buy? So here's what I'm looking for. That's going to be my variable. X equals boxes of cookies. So it's $3.99 each. So $3.99 times however many boxes you have. And I can spend at most $25. So this total has to be less than or equal to $25. So then we just divide by $3.99. And it says x has to be less than or equal to 6.2. So that means I can buy six boxes and two tenths of a box, but we don't buy two tenths of a box, right? So I can buy up to six boxes. Number seven, you earn 300 a month working at Duncan. You have $10 monthly fee to Planet Fitness, and you put $100 away monthly. What is the amount of money you have left to spend each month? So you spend $10 on Planet Fitness plus $100 that you put away each month plus the X amount that you have left over. And all of that added up has to be less than or equal to 300. So we just combine like terms. Subtract 110 to both sides, and we have $190 left to spend.
and then for the last one, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. Its perimeter is at most 12. Each congruent side is 5 inches. What are the possible lengths of the remaining side? Assume it is a whole number. So this is what I'm looking to find, the remaining side. So the perimeter is where you add up all the sides. So 5 plus 5 plus x is at most 12. So it has to be less than or equal to 12. So we get 10 plus x, subtract the 10, and that side can be less than or equal to 2 because I subtracted 10 to both sides. So that really means I have two options. If it's a whole number, then the third side can be 2 inches or 1 inch because it just has to be less than or equal to 2. So it can be equal to 2 or it could also be 1 because it said it would be a whole number and even if it was 1 it would still be a true statement that the perimeter was less than 12.